Hi there, Physics 20 student. I'm just going to explain Unit C Lesson 1 here. And let's just share our screen here so we have a better understanding of what we're going to be learning in this topic. So first things first, you're going to be realizing in circular motion, uh, we're going to be focusing on a special case of 2D motion. And this is all going to be dealing with this whole Newton's laws that which you've learned earlier in the previous dynamics topic. Explaining quantitatively and qualitatively through planetary and satellite motions and then using Kepler's laws. So you'll learn more about that in this topic. So of course, you're gonna have to do the web lesson. In the web lesson, that's uh, where you pick up all the material you need. Textbook will help you on that, and then there's your assignment. So with that in a nutshell, let's talk about more about um, this beauty of our circular motion. That's what you're gonna be seeing in chapter uh, 6.1, for chapter 5.1, I should say. So. First of all, what is this uh, diagram trying to represent? Well, we got an ideal object that's going around in a circle. So it must be a force that's being applied to it to make this happen. And usually the force is right in the middle uh, where the object is actually going around and like where the force is actually going around and around. So there's the pivot point, I guess you could say, like the center of the circle. So with that, all these forces are going in. it. Like for example, this diagram right here, you'll realize overhead view of a ball moving in a circular path in a horizontal plane. A force is being pushed towards the actual center of the circle that keeps the ball in a circular path. So you probably have done this before where you just rotate something in a circular motion and eventually what's gonna happen is, is that um, you let it go and you don't know if it's going to go up to the left, to the right, and so forth. Uh, so that's one of the things that you'll be learning in this topic. Other things you're gonna be learning is, well, the engine turbine, where it's the centripetal acceleration we'll look at, at the tip of the blade, can be determined from the frequency of the blade's rotation. So we'll look at that more in detail. So you're gonna see ter terminology like frequency um, and other terms that you might be not familiar with are, well, what is it frequency measured in? So we'll see how that's gonna be looked at also. Another thing that you're gonna be seeing is roller coasters and how come you don't fall down when you go around it? Well, you'll see that it's dealing with centripetal acceleration slash force here, where it actually won't allow the force gravity pushing you down, but at the same time, force normal is pushing up, but it's not the same amount as it used to be because of the fact that it, the design of the actual roller coaster. So you'll look at more of that. In the next topic after, you'll look at Kepler's laws. And Kepler was a scientist who helped uh, Kupersk about the whole fact of the planet, planet. Our Earth is not the center. So that's the geocentric model, which you learned in grade nine. So you'll look more in the helocentric model. So in that, there's three laws. So first law, each planet's orbit is an ellipse. So it talks about more what an ellipse is all about. Um, Kepler law two, it talks about how you get around this, uh, when you get closer to the sun, the planet, it goes faster. So it's just trying to say for that one. And the third one is just basically explaining how you could find the relationship with the period. So T, capital T is a period, R, just normal R. It's the distance yeah, from one point to the other. Uh, you're gonna be realizing there's a relationship with it and we're using these formulas to help us understand that. So in a nutshell, uh, you'll see all those being played a factor. So I'll get you to do some prior knowledge questions now. Welcome back. And let's just look at the beauty that exists in circular motions and the whole fact of uh, planetary motions too, because they use this circular motion method. So first things first, I was going to bring up the fact of uh, how there is this Ferris wheel, which is going at a fast pace. We could see the beauty of that with all the colors and everything it makes a nice beauty of that. Usually you see a lot of these um, throughout major cities throughout the world. Um, also, the, the actual swing ride that if you found in amusement parks, when you're up there, you see a lot because you're quite high and you can see the beauty that's going around at the same time and you don't want to get sick at the same time, so keep that in mind. So there are some uh, wonders that you have to have um, going through your brain to not make sure you don't get sick. Easy way to do that, always look at one fixed point so you don't get sick in that case. Well, in this case, you're seeing the circular motion that's happening from this elliptical illusion. And the actual object is stationary, but it's just the way our, um, 
eyes work that we're seeing two different views here. So let's put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord, thank you for giving us the opportunity to learn more about circular motion. And through circular motion, we will learn more about our planetary motions that exist in every day and how it benefits us to understand how your beauty is there to help us grasp, grasping these concepts. Lord, circles are very important to make us united together and let us always unite with our subject on hand and others around us to have peace around the world. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, class, and have a great term here.